Welcome to Ultrasound for Ascites. This is for the Internal Medicine MS3 course. We're going to present a case and go over ultrasound guided paracentesis. Here's our case. This is a 45 year old gentleman presenting with abdominal pain and fever. He never really sees a physician. He's had, he says he drinks maybe like six beers a day. He reports some weight gain over the last couple of weeks and he has no significant medical history. On exam, his heart rate's 115. He's febrile at 39.2. He has sinus tachycardia. His belly is distended, diffusely tender, with some dullness to percussion, and you think you feel maybe a fluid wave. He has no peritoneal signs and no focal abdominal tenderness. He also has some mild jaundice. His labs, he's got a white count of 25, Hemoglobin's 11, platelet count of 200, INR of 1.5. His AST, ALT are minimally elevated. So what would be a, the next best step? So he needs a paracentesis. So this is a procedure with, to withdraw peritoneal fluid for analysis. It can be done for diagnostic or therapeutic reasons. Diagnostic would be to diagnose things like spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, or to determine what may be causing the ascites. Therapeutic would be to relieve abdominal discomfort from distension from ascites or to improve a patient's respiratory status from ascites. There's only one absolute contraindication, which, is in, which includes an acute surgical abdomen. There are several relative contraindications. One is thrombocytopenia, and the other is coagulopathy, which can be reduced by administering blood products. Others include pregnancy, distended bladder, cellulitis, distended bowel, and bowel adhesions. So with any procedure, there are risks, and you should be familiar with the risks so you can talk to your patient about this. In this case, it includes bleeding, introducing infection, a bowel perforation, or perforation of any other intra-abdominal organ. You can minimize the risks of bowel perforation and hitting any other organ by using ultrasound. So your technique, you're going to use either your curvilinear or your phased array probe. You're going to scan all four quadrants of the abdomen looking for a spot that has the best um, pocket of ascites fluid. So when you're ultrasounding for ascites, you're asking two basic questions. Is there ascites? Where's the best pocket for a paracentesis? So generally, when we're doing a paracentesis, we stick to the lower quadrants. This way, we avoid the liver and spleen. And then we also want to stay either midline or lateral um, to the umbilicus so that we avoid the epigastric arteries. As you can see, this would be an example of a left lower quadrant ultrasound, which shows a nice large pocket of ascites, which appears as hypoechoic, and then the bowel underneath, which is nice and hyperechoic. Here we have two ultrasound videos, one of the right lower quadrant, which shows the ascites uh, within um, the abdomen and the bowel floating underneath. This would be a great spot for a paracentesis. Now you can do a paracentesis either um, with real-time guidance where you are doing the ultrasound and watching your needle go into the abdomen. Um, but usually a paracentesis is done through a static procedure where you mark the spot and then you put down the ultrasound and you perform the procedure. But either way works. As you can see on the video on the right, this is the right upper quadrant and you would want to avoid this as you can see the liver here floating within the ascites fluid and it would be poor form to um, biopsy the liver. So you're going to gown and glove, stare, get your patient prepped in a sterile fashion and then you want to use this thing called the Z technique where you're going to pull down on the skin, insert the needle and then after you take the needle out you release the skin and then this is going to create a seal so that Ascites fluid does not continue to leak out of the abdomen once you're done. 
Now, if you're doing it for a therapeutic reason, you're going to collect a large amount of ascites. Usually, you're going to put a catheter in and let it drain for a while. If you're just doing a diagnostic tap, um, generally just um, 20 cc, 60 cc's is enough. So in our case, we successfully complete an ultrasound guided paracentesis without any complications. We diagnose the patient with spontaneous bacterial peritonitis based on the analysis of the ascites. He started on appropriate antimicrobial therapy and admitted to the hospital. This results in a better prognosis. So in summary, paracentesis for therapeutic versus diagnostic reasons. So as we talked about, therapeutic would be to alleviate discomfort, and diagnostic would be to determine what's causing the ascites. Absolute contraindication would be acute surgical abdomen, and then the relative contraindications include coagulopathies, thrombocytopenia, distended bladder, pregnancy, distended bowel, and an area of cellulitis. So you should know your risks for any procedure that you're going to perform. In this case, it includes uh, infection, risk of bleeding, and bowel or other intra-abdominal perforation, which can be avoided using ultrasound. So ultrasound um, increases the first time success of a paracentesis and it lowers the risk for the patient. Thank you.